Athena has, yes. yes. Uh, go ahead and call the meeting to order um, at this time, and we'll have a word of prayer to start our meeting. Father, just thank you that you've given us this day. Thank you for all the blessings that you filled it with. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to represent the people of Hartford. And we just pray, Father, that you'll guide our thoughts and decisions tonight. And may they benefit those people. But Father, may it also honor you and pray these things in your name. Amen. Uh, we have with us visitors. We lacked a quorum, so there won't be any business we'll be able to do unless some others come in. Uh, but we have some visitors tonight to make a presentation to the council about uh, the contract management that we've asked them to uh, offer to us. So I've asked them to go ahead and go first so that they can get on the road to go back to where they... Uh, here comes another one, Sydney. Uh, so they can get back on the road to where they... Uh, need to uh, under these conditions. So, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to uh, David Wakefield from Veolia to make his presentation. Thank you, Mayor. I know I've met some of you. Um, <clears throat> the existing council, I've met uh, quite a few of you. Um, your city attorney, we've met. Of course, we've worked um, considerably with Lisa and uh, Mayor Chen over the last few months. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, the mayor and I have been in talks for several months since he's been mayor. I know uh, two things about uh, Mayor Chen, for sure. One, he has strong faith, and two, he really cares about his community. When, he, uh, when we started talking, um, he's concerned about the water system. Uh, so he asked us um, about our contract operations. We've been contract operating in Hardensburg, Kentucky, as well as all over the country and all over the world. We are a global company. We are the oldest environmental company in the world. We're over 165 years old. And when he approached me and we began discussions, and uh, I know he's looked at different options, um, the city has been out of compliance for disinfection byproducts mostly, and that is when you pump water out of Ruck River, the organics in that water, when you mix it with the disinfection, which is chlorine, which you use for disinfection at the water plant. You mix those two together, and it creates precursors of disinfection byproducts. And they're called, their big names, uh, trihalomethanes, referred to as TTHMs, and halicidic acids, which are referred to as HAA5s. So this is what the city has been struggling with among other issues, um, at least since 1993. So I got some printouts here of the compliance schedule that came off the drinking water website. Um, it's this one here, and if you guys are in the audience, I know there's some new members, feel free to look at any of this information. We'll be glad to make copies for them. Okay. So, there's page after page after page of violations going back to 1993. So at least for trihalomethanes and halicidic acids, Hartford Water System has been out of compliance since 1993. There's also, I printed out, some language that the city has to report to its customers when it does violate these in, uh, these maximum contaminant levels for the EPA drinking water. And it tells you what you have to do, what it means to violate this issue, and you have to have a corrective action plan to get this back in compliance. Unlike a lot of states, Kentucky has been very lax to date on issuing fines and actually forcing the system to do something, although they send you NLVs 
No water system wants to be out of compliance. No water system wants to have to send this information to their customers. And this information states that some people who drink water containing trihalomethane in excess of the maximum contaminant level over many years may experience problems with their liver, kidneys, central nervous system, and may have an increased risk for cancer. Now that says if they drink this water over the long term, well, we know from this violation report that it's been over a long term. It's been 25 years. So I know George really wants to have the best for his city, his constituents, his customers. So he's trying to figure out a way to resolve this situation. When we first... Uh, Went to, when I first went to Hardinsburg in 1999, I apologize, I'm the district manager for Veolia. I covered Kentucky and Tennessee. But when I first went to Hardinsburg, they were on Rough River at that time as well. They were in violation for the very same constituents, trihalomethanes and halicidic acids. As a matter of fact, there were, at that time, there was like 376 water systems that were in that violation in Kentucky. Trihalomethanes and halicidic acids. We'll talk a little bit about it, but we've done our due diligence. We know what we need to do. We got Hardinsburg in compliance, the same source water, the same issues. And these are just a couple of the issues at, at the plant. There's other issues in the distribution system, uh, maintaining chlorine residuals. Um, there's, there's multiple issues here. But what the mayor and the council have asked us to submit a contract pr proposal on is the water treatment facility, the water distribution system, and the sewer collection system. You guys probably know all of your wastewater, uh, you maintain your collection system in the city limits, but it ultimately goes to a regional plant, the Ohio County Regional Wastewater Facility. And then you pay the fees uh, for them to treat your wastewater. So this contract would cover all of the other um, water distribution and collection. Now you guys are going to have access, to, you new council members, you'll have access to all this information. I'm not going to read all of this 12 page proposal, but I am going to read the first couple paragraphs. Dear Mayor Chen, following up our, over our conversations over the past few weeks, we have prepared this proposal to demonstrate the level of expertise and commitment that we will bring to this new partnership for the operation, maintenance, management of your city's water and sewer systems. What we will demonstrate in this proposal is that Veolia is uniquely qualified to be your O&M partner, your operation, maintenance, and management partner. As we have developed the ActiFlow high rate clarifier treatment technology, which now is in use at more than a thousand plants throughout the world, the OLA also operates active treatment plant systems throughout the U.S., including an 8 MGD plant at Chattahoochee, Alabama, a 120 MGD water plant that serves Tampa Bay water and serves 2.5 million customers in Central Florida. Now, it's a different scale, but it's the same process that you have here. And that's a Veolia patent, patented Veolia water technology that you have at your water plant. And it's very good process when it's ran properly. Our proposal builds from an understanding of the issues that you now face, and we are prepared to transition your water plant, water distribution, and collection system operations from the city, combining these operations under Veolia as a single source manager and service provider. We also understand that ensuring continuity of essential services is a critical concern of the city. And we will be ready to start the transition process for your water and sewer system staff upon notice to proceed from the city. The process that we will use for this transition and transfer process will protect your water and sewer systems with no interruption in service. And it says, or compliance issues, no compliance issues based on the transition. You still have the compliance issues that you have now until we can get those corrected. VLA will also work to transition the city's current staff using a process that is targeted to ensuring the effective 
transition transfer of those staff to our firm. In that regard, we understand that two of the city's employees are within one year qualifying for Commonwealth of Kentucky retirement benefits. We also understand the city's desire to keep these two employees on the city payroll until August of 2019. To facilitate this approach, we will initially lease these two employees from the city, which will allow both to qualify for their 20-year retirement benefits. At the end of August of 2019, those employees will be offered the opportunity to transition to our firm or to retire if they so choose. And that's all I'm going to read of this because a lot of this is going to be covered in the presentation. But we feel this is what makes us uniquely qualified to manage your system. So I also have with me Kevin Jones. He's our structuring director in the South. He is the one that priced this job for us. And Mike Masterson, who is our project manager at Hardensburg. All right, Mike. As you see there, I'm David Wakefield, district manager for Veolia, Kevin Jones, structuring manager, technical and transition support. The only has the experience and resources needed to deliver. We just covered that. The Veolia team that will work with you will be, I will be your direct person. In our proposal, Mike will expand his role as being project manager over Hardensburg and Hartford. We're 38 miles away. Okay. So that gives you resources from the Hardensburg project that you wouldn't normally have. The o and approach and tools, we'll discuss that. Well, we've already talked about some of the cost-effective solutions. Let's discuss that for a minute. Right now, you treat about 10 million gallons a month at the water treatment plant. You sell 5 million gallons a month. <clears throat> so you're, there's a big difference, big variance there. So half of the water that you are paying to produce is either being flushed out of the system due to issues with low chlorine residuals, unable to maintain chlorine residuals in the distribution system, or it's water, water loss. All we know is that it's unbilled water. Based on what you produce versus what you sell, it's half. So in our contract, what we do is we write it up to where it's not a one-way street. It goes both directions. It's called a 10% hydraulic load plus or minus. So if we decrease, if we can decrease that unaccounted for water, Let's say in the first year we decrease it by 10%, there will be a calculation in that contract that says that we will reduce our fee because we'll be feeding less chemicals. We'll be, you'll have less money invested in the production of that water. So if it goes both ways. If you get more customers or if you wholesale water to someone and it goes up by 10%, there's a calculation in that contract to raise our fee because our chemical cost will go up. If we reduce it by 10%, 20%, or whatever the case may be, then there's a calculation to decrease, decrease our fee because our chemical costs and so forth will go down. Our operating costs will go down. So that is money that can be recaptured back to the city of Hartford. Selected Veolia for this o and partnership. <coughs> They, we have competition, we have competitors, there's other companies out there. None of them really are really in this market of my Kentucky and Tennessee. Nobody can support this project like Hardensburg can. Hardensburg's a big project. We have about 420 miles. We serve the entire county of Breckenridge County and the other two incorporated cities, Urbanton and Cloverport. They wholesale water to both of those cities. We do the public works at Hardensburg. We do the trash pickup, we do the streets, we do the water plant distribution, 
the wastewater plant, collection system, and public works. Well, we do the mowing, we do the parks, we do everything there. And we talked about it before, when I went in 99, they had the exact same issues and they were on Rough River at that time. We got them into compliance in 2003 and they stayed in compliance until we helped them build a new state-of-the-art reverse osmosis water treatment plant, the only one in the state of Kentucky on the Ohio River. We totally reversed the system around. Uh, they built a new plant and they went from being one of the worst water systems and the mayor will tell you this himself. Went from one of the worst water systems in the state to one of the best. And I've had Mayor Chen, uh, I've had Jerry, and a couple of others come up. They've met with Mayor Macy at Hardensburg. Mayor Macy's been either mayor or on the council the entire time we've been there. They met with him privately. We gave them tours of our facilities. The city of Hardensburg is a hundred times more viable today than they were the day they hired us many years ago. Let's go to the next slide, Mike. This is just a regional coverage area where we're located. Um, this shows you Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, and North Carolina. And it just shows you a, a few of our facilities. And that breaks down what we do at those facilities. Next slide. Here we talked about ActiFlow. That's the process that you use to treat your water at the water treatment plant. These are other ActiFlow facilities that we operate. Um, there's Tampa Bay I mentioned, 120 MGD plant. Uh, Chattahoochee, and there's also Wilsonville, or just just a few uh, that I pulled out that we act uh, use uh, where they act where they actually use the actual process, and we operate those facilities on a daily basis. From our Chattahoochee plant, when we were doing our due diligence, when the, the mayor asked us to come in, I actually brought in Kevin Jones. He's out of Tampa, Florida. Um, Mike Masterson, our technical director, Brad Davis, who's out of Alabama. He is an ActiFlow expert. And also, um, Rebecca Hill, who's from our Chattahoochee plant, also was involved in our due diligence where they operate uh, seven MGD <coughs> ActiFlow water plants. We have 23 years of owning experience in, uh, in Kentucky. We've been partnering with Hardensburg for that long. We're part of the national companies, 170 plus municipal clients. O&M responsibility for 85 municipal water plants. <coughs> Affiliated technologies company, which is the ActiFlow. It's installed at Veolia plants in the U.S. and globally. Veolia started up and now operates ActiFlow systems, which we discussed at Chattahoochee, Wilsonville, and Tampa Bay. Next slide. Oil partnership. We're not your typical contractor. Um, we're not your typical contract with an engineering company. Our number one goal is providing professional services, long-term services, for your facilities. So it's our goal to keep you as viable as possible so you can keep us running your, your system. We don't jump into locations and just try to make everything we can make and get out. Our success is based on long-term management contracts, and we can't do that if we don't find a way to keep you viable, financially viable. All right, Hardensburg, now, these are some pictures of their plant. We assisted them in building this plant in 2007. Like I said, it's a reverse osmosis plant. A lot of your bottled water is treated with reverse osmosis. It is the Rolls Royce of water treatment. The only municipal RO plant in the state of Kentucky. And the reason we've done this is because we located, relocated from Rupp River to Wells down along the Ohio River. 
and people that know things about water treatment is surface water is generally not real hard water. You generally don't have, the customers don't have to maintain softeners unless they just like it soft. Well water in Kentucky is hard as nails. So they didn't want to build a new plant and then on top of that make the uh, customers have to maintain a softening system in their homes. We also found from years and years of farming along the Ohio River, if you know, you've ever been down there in the Cloverport area, it's just nothing but farmland, farm land. Well, from years and years of farming, there's high nitrates. Some of you may or may not know what high nitrates are. It's not good. And there are MCLs based on nitrates. Uh, it causes, can cause um, methylglobulinemia, blue baby syndrome. Um, of course, you got nitrates in some foods, but if it's over an MCL, you have to figure out a way to treat it. So reverse osmosis removes the nitrates and softens the water all in one process. That's why they chose our own. They operate a, uh, just under a one MGD oxidation ditch wastewater treatment facility. It just went under a big uh, upgrade, and we assisted them with that. Two ongoing o and OM contracts. Um, we worked to start up the plant. Uh, we have 15 people licensed. Most, most majority of them either distribution, collection, water treatment, or wastewater treatment certifications. So when you take out the guys that do the garbage pickup and the mowing and so forth, the guys that work in distribution collection, I think there's 12. When we took over, they couldn't keep guys certified. That's very difficult. It's, uh, Anthony will tell you, uh, it's almost impossible to find certified operators when you lose one. They are few and far between. So we have developed programs to where we cross-train employees to where they're, they have uh, multiple certifications. So now at Hardensburg, 12 of the guys that work at water, wastewater, distribution, or collection with 19 certifications. So there's no lack of certifications and we would want to do the same thing here. We want the guys to be multiple certified. Some are already, some are not. But that's something that we would want to work on. Let's just show you some about the revenue of the old. We also are an energy company as well. We have an energy department. Um, we run steam plants. We run steam in the city of Boston and uh, energy grids all, all over the country. So that's a sister company, the energy side of the Eolia. Okay. Our vision for the O&M team for the city of Hartford it would be supported by the Hardensburg location. We have a lot of Veolia-owned equipment. Uh, trucks, sewer cameras, uh, sewer jetter machines, smoke testing machines. We have multiple equipment that the city would not have to purchase that they'll have access to. Anything owned by Veolia, uh, City of Hartford would have access to that equipment. Two of the current employees, of course, uh, are within, we talked about that, are within uh, eight months or so, ten months now. Um, be eight months, January 1. In August, they'll be available for their 20-year benefits. <coughs> they, they've expressed that they may want to retire at that point, but if they decided to, they can, they can retire, get their benefits. If they want to transition over to Veoli at that time, um, they are more than welcome to. If, and then if they choose to retire, then we will replace those two personnel. Um, the other five that are currently employed would be transitioned over to Veoli. In our proposal, we have plugged in a 3.5% increase on top of their current salary for every employee. I think some of them said that they maybe have not got an increase in a couple of years. So we wanted to make sure, because this is at the end of the year, and that's generally when we give our raises out, 
So if we start up January 1, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have their 12 months, they would not qualify for an increase. So we built in a 3.5% increase on top of their current salary starting day one with the oil. Next slide. Oh, go, I'm sorry, go back one. Regional management and technical resources. I told George, if, if you decide that you want to move forward and you want to hire Veolia to run your facilities, I said, you will see so many Veolia people, you'll make your head spin. Because we're going to bring in a transition team. We need to, there's so much that we would need to do, so much uh, implementation of software, um, different types of uh, databases where we track uh, operational performance, um, maintenance, and issues that which we'll talk about going forward. But you'll have a lot of resources that will come in uh, for the initial transition phase, uh, transitioning over to Veolia. Um, go ahead, Mark. Of course, our transition plan will be based on the experience developed over the course of hundreds of transitions. We do this on a routine basis. The transition effort will be led by the transition manager, which is me, the technical management team, which will be Brad Davis and Kevin Jones, and then the project manager will be Mike Masterson. I have 30 years with Veolia. That tells my age, I think. But as of July of this year, I had my 30-year anniversary with Veolia. We have a long employee retention with Veolia. It's a great company to work for with a lot of opportunity. Mike has been with the company for 17 years. You'll have, a, you'll have health and safety come in. Jose Alvarez out of Tampa. He's our, he's our safety director. He will come in in the transition. Brad Davis, our environmental and technical um, Kevin, Human Resources, um, Jack Morrison as our HR Director for the South, he's already been here. He's already met with all the employees. The mayor asked me, he said that the employees have some concerns. Um, is there any way you could bring someone in to meet with them and, t and talk to them and tell them exactly what would be involved in the transition? So Jack flew up here and we met, I believe it was in August, and we met with all the employees, and there's a copy here. He created this to show what the OAS benefits are versus what the city's benefits are. <clears throat> we met with the employees, we gave them all copies of these, and we answered all of their questions. So our HR director's already been here and already takes the time to meet with all the employees. We will continuously collaborate and communicate with our point of contact, which would be Mayor Chen and the City Council. We will submit monthly reports to the City Council. Mike will be at your City Council meetings, and he will submit reports with all of the activities of Veolia for that month. It will have all of your data, your water loss data, how your water plant performed, um, all the operations portion, there will be a comprehensive document that will be submitted on a monthly basis to the council. Okay. The oldest value-added approach. When we first came in and looked at it, you had your distribution system and collection working out of this location behind City Hall, and then you had the water plant operations, of course, at the water plant. And I think since they've discussed, but our, our approach would be to have one operations supervisor that would be um, the, I'm sorry, is it Tony? Leon. 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 That would be Leon, um, who's the current supervisor. Um, I know he's looking to retire in eight months, but we would have 
one supervisor, and then Mike will be project manager. They would report to Mike, and Mike would be the contact with George and the council. And then if you need to go beyond Mike, then it would come up to me. So we would have all of distribution, collection, and water operation. Have, have Leon, have you already done that? Have you already consolidated everybody up, under you? Yeah. yeah. It was that way for years, and then two years ago it was separated, but it's back together now. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's how we would want to operate. After looking at everything, we'd want to have one operations supervisor rather than two. That way you have cohesive, coordinated, because one hand needs to know what the other hand is doing, and you're not duplicating work. So the value-added approach we have is by having Mike, as project manager, he's 38 miles away. He's got two operation managers at Hardingsburg, so he can he can come back and forth, and he's got the expertise to run this project. Uh, he's done it at Beolia at Hardingsburg for a long time. That way, you're not having to pay a full-time project manager, um, which are very hard to come by. Um, we tried to make this budget this proposal within the scope of what your current expenses are now or less. So to do that, there's no way we could have budgeted in a full-time project manager here on site 24-7. Now, that's not to say if the system grows, we save the city revenue, they start uh, building up financial funds, at some point you may want to have a full-time PM project manager uh, at this facility, but we're only 30, 38 miles away. The other value added approach is we've accumulated over the years vehicles, equipment, I mentioned sewer cameras, sewer washers, uh, smoke test machines, a lot of things that are Veolia owned that you wouldn't have to purchase. A sewer camera, I'm not talking the push camera that you push in, I'm talking the rover camera that you, as a robot, that you drive through and you can watch on a monitor and see where you got inflow and infiltration coming in to your, uh, from, from rainwater or groundwater that you come into your sewer that you're paying for the regional plant to treat. So, you want that camera system, just the camera alone, just the rover, is probably $65,000. So, not counting all the monitors and the truck that we house it in. So, you won't have to purchase that capital type of capital equipment because you will have access from, from Hardensburg. That's value added. You have the full resources of Veolia, not just Mike and myself, not just Hardensburg. You have the full resources of Veolia behind you when you partner. And it, it's truly a partnership between Veolia and the city of Hartford. Next slide, Mark. Safety is huge with the oil. I know we were here when doing our due diligence and you had the horrible tragedy where there was an inmate on your garbage truck and he fell off and he passed away. He didn't make it. Safety is huge with our company. We supply all of our personnel, still told safety boots annually or whenever needed, all the PPE, personal protection equipment that they would ever need, we supply it all for them. And we require that they wear it. Safety glasses, hard hats, whatever the situation calls for. 69% better are RIR, <clears throat> recordable incident rates. So, Veolia, as a whole, our average is 69% better than the municipal average. We're also 51% better on the national average than our competitors. And that's not an accident. I mean, literally, we work towards that. And we strive for that. We, we want all of our employees to go home to their families the same way they come. This can be a dangerous business. 
There are lots of ways to get injured and get hurt. So we want to keep our employees safe, and we want to keep whoever visit our facilities safe as well. So we have proven methods that we will use to accomplish that. And this just lists some of the some of the things that we do. Okay, Mike, next slide. Tools and approaches. We have some best practices that we've implemented over years and years of operating water and wastewater facilities that we implement at every facility we operate. So it's continuity, it's uniform. What you guys will do here at Hardensburg, or Hartford, the same thing we do at Hardensburg, same thing we do at Tampa Bay. We initiate these tools and these best practices. Process control management plan. It's a management plan to make sure <clears throat> that when we're optimizing the treatment for the plant to, to get out of violation of disinfection <coughs> byproducts, it will tell us and guide the operators on when they're getting out of their optimal ranges. It will have um, control limits set up for every parameter that we monitor, all the tests that we run, uh, very typical to what they do in industry on a daily basis. Most municipalities don't do it, but industry does and Veolia does it as well. And that's how we know when we're heading to, to, towards non-compliance or if we're getting out of the uh, treatment range that we know where we need to be. Cost of goods, goods sold, we call it cost. We have um, purchasing department, sourcing department. We can purchase, uh, let's pick one out, Hawk. You guys probably never heard of it, it's a German company. Uh, I know the guys from the water plant know it well. A lot of the equipment in water from wastewater plants is Hawk equipment. We have national agreements, worldwide agreements with these companies, and nobody buys this type of equipment cheaper than the old. Some of our discount, discounts are up to 45% on some of the uh, supplies and equipment that we can purchase. We got purchasing agreements from fleet, office supplies, um, lab equipment, um, lab supplies, all the way down. So when we purchase, we can purchase cheaper than what your normal municipality, municipality can purchase items for. And like fire hydrants, um, just, just whatever the case may be. We have purchase agreements in place where we can help with that purchasing. We have an in-house CPM group, Capital Program Management Team. Uh, we have a technical support group, procurement and purchasing. That's what I say. When you see the price in our proposal, that's not just for me and Mike and your local staff and your regional staff. That's the full weight of Veolia that we can bring in at any given time that is no added cost to the city of Hartford. We've already talked about the Act for Next slide. Okay, full service approach. Our first year annual fee will be $796,338. $796, okay? That includes the post fee covers the operation, maintenance, and related costs with the exception of electric, water, and sewer costs. And I know George has some questions about that. Um, those are very, very minimal, except for the electric. That's about the only one that you're going to have that you would actually get billed for. Um, that includes a $72,000 a year maintenance account. We call it a limited account because if we spend it all or we go over slightly, uh, then you reimburse us. If we don't spend it all, we reimburse you. That would be anything under what would be considered a capital purchase. So uh, let's say Leon needs a, uh, a pump rebuilt or a motor or whatever the case may be. He needs it now. It's $2,500, less than $2,500 or less. That gives us the authority to go ahead and have that repaired, get it put back in service, 
without coming to the city for approval. Now we will give you a breakdown with our monthly report of every dime we spend out of that lemon account. That's a no margin account to where, just like I said, if we don't spend it all, uh, it's reimbursed back to the city. Currently I have two Ford F-350s. You can see one of them right here. It's a 2012 diesel. It's got 50,000 miles on it. It's barely broke in. It's in excellent condition. It's a utility truck. <coughs> Your fleet is pretty aged. Um, you need a couple new vehicles. These are, these are vehicles that are paid for. And the other one's an F-350 uh, F with a dump bed on it. I think it's only got 40,000 miles on it. We will bring those two vehicles for the distribution and collection team at no added cost to Hartford. Long-term commitment, contract term, be 10 years. Now let's talk about also in that price, so the O&M fee is like $724 plus the $72,000 for repair and maintenance. Your current expenses, the best we could tell, are around $800,000 for the same operations. We think over the course of time, and we've laid out a plan in this proposal, and I would welcome all of you to read it thoroughly. It lays out a plan to do the main three things that the city of Hartford would ask us to do, that they need. Cost savings, environmental compliance, and take care of the employees. And we've laid out a plan in this proposal to satisfy all three of those areas. In that number is about $140,000 of capital improvement costs some of the huge things are, and Leon knows that uh, there's a lot of residual solids in your water plant, and that's part of, part of the reason that you're not getting the treatment that you need. Your pretreatment basin is like 16 by 50 by 10 foot deep. That's where your pretreatment chemicals go into. That's supposed to be your contact time for those chemicals. That tank is 10 foot deep and has 7 foot of sludge in it. <clears throat> so the water coming in from the river is hitting the chemicals and going right into the plant. There's no retention time. That's a lot of solids. We've got to get those out of there day one. The back horse lagoons are also, that they're over across uh, the street uh, behind the little quick mark there. Um, when they backwash their filters, the solids from that go to those lagoons. And there's a permit, the city has a permit, uh, MPDES permit, to discharge from that into Rough River. So those are supposed to keep be kept cleaned out. They're, they're full all the way to the top. So basically what the water that goes over into them is just running off into the river. So we built in money to get rid of those residuals as well. There's other things we know we're going to have to add some chemicals. There's some findings in here and what we will do. We know we're going to have to add some chemicals to optimize the treatment. We budgeted for that. We know we're going to have to add injection points uh, to move some chemicals. There's some lab equipment that we budgeted in, some safety equipment and so forth. Um, new computers, printers, so forth. So there's about $140,000 budgeted into this number, but we spread it out over the term of the 10-year contract to make it feasible. Kevin? Kevin, uh, he priced this. He reviewed, along with myself and Mike, he reviewed all of your financials. We had your last audit. And we compared basically what we are proposing in our proposal against what you were spending currently. The best that we could tell. <coughs> Kevin would be better speaking towards the that portion of it. If you have any questions for him, do you have anything that you want to add, Kevin? 
Not at this time. Go ahead and finish your presentation. Okay. So we only show, when we build a budget for the proposal, we, all, we only show what we're bidding against. So if we show labor, then we're comparing that against your current labor. We show our benefits, we're comparing that to your current benefits. <coughs> So the one thing that really allows us to be so competitive <coughs> is your your service, your state retirement. It's 21% looking to go up to 29%. And that's that's great. <coughs> that's great for the employees. Now, we feel like that transitioning over to a 401k plan, uh, plan with the only uh, the two guys that uh, are almost ready to retire, we're totally going to facilitate that. The other guys will transition over. It's it's a proven fact that over the course of time with a private company like Veolia that they'll make more money and have more opportunities over the years than they would with the city. But yes, they will not be contributing to that retirement system. And that is one of the big factors, I'm just going to be perfectly honest, that makes us so competitive is because your retirement system is so high. So <coughs> that allows us to, to come in at under probably what your current expenses are today and, and still give the employees a raises and still budget $140,000 over 10 years to get the facility, uh, start getting the facility where it needs to be. We've talked about the commitment to improving your operations. We will commit to getting your facility back into compliance and keeping it in compliance. We have studied it. We've had our technical staff study all your data. We feel like that we can get your system in compliance with chemical optimization. Um, moving some chemical injection points and adding some different chemicals. We think we can do it chemically. Worst case scenario, <clears throat> we, there might have to be some capital investment. We did not have to do it at Hardensburg and yet they had a much bigger system there. We figure, we think that we can do it here without any capital investment. We've talked enough about the TTHMs and HAAs. <coughs> the distribution system. The ongoing system. The guys are flushing nonstop to try to keep chlorinated water in a million gallon tank. I know you've recently installed a mixing system in it, which will help, but it's really way oversized for the amount of water that you produce. So, in the guy's defense, it's hard for them to keep that residual, um, so they're flushing a lot of it out just trying to keep chlorine because the, the state says that you will maintain. 0.02 chlorine residual at your farthest retention point at all times. And I know they have a very difficult time keeping chlorine residual. So that's the other side of the coin. Once we get the plant uh, all optimized and get it where it needs to be, and, and I, I'm going to tell you, your employees are doing a good job. They're good at doing a good job with the resources and the training that they have. It's just going to have to go to a different level to be able to be in compliance and maintain compliance. We're going to make every effort to reduce the water loss, which brings revenue back to the city. You don't want to keep producing and wasting half of the water that you produce at the plant. We talked about we'll lease the two employees, and then we'd be happy to have them come over to Viola after they retire if they so choose. Okay, selecting so Viola as your O&M partner, and I talked about this already, we really do look at it as a, as a partnership. We're not just another contractor, we're not just an in, another engineering contract. We have a proven record of performance, not just 38 miles away, but all over the country and all over the world. We will work to build and sustain a long-term O&M plan and approach. And I've laid that out in the proposal and uh, show you all the tools that we will implement. And they are very specialized tools 
that will get us in compliance and keep it in compliance, and it's a proven method. All right, any questions? I know I ran a little long. I apologize, George. I'm a little long-winded. Just take it off that bill. Let's see. <laughs> I know it's a lot to digest, but once you guys read the proposal, uh, I would ask that some of the current members, if, if we can make some copies for the new council members, and I'm, I want to congratulate all the new members on coming to the uh, Hartford City Council. Um, you do yeoman's work, and <coughs> you get very little credit. So I applaud you for uh, the work that you do the mayor of the existing council and the new council coming in. So please read it. Please review it. If you have any questions, the mayor's got my contact information, or he can contact me with any questions. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. I'd be glad to take any of you to Hardensburg and give you a tour of our Hardensburg facility. It's what it was when we took over compared to what it is today. And I'll let you meet privately with the mayor of Hardensburg. He's been the mayor for, what, 18 years now? Um, and was on the city council for 12 years prior to that. I'd be happy for you to talk to him and let him tell you privately the job that we've done in Hardensburg and the job that we continue to do. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, and I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to let them excuse themselves, so we'll take a look at the uh, minutes from the last meeting that you have before you. First of all, our regular council meeting on the 25th. Uh, the After you've had a chance to look those over, I'll entertain a motion to accept the second. <coughs> I'll make the motion that we accept the minutes from the October 25th meeting. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All of Labor did, I'm sorry. All those in favor, raise uh, your hand. Thank you. All right. The special call meeting on the 5th. So moved. All right. Second. Got a motion. Second. Any discussion? Did, Go ahead. Was that the one Lisa wasn't here on that? Right. One? I took a minute, so if you got any problems. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I just, I, I think for the ones that were here, I think we really stressed on when we did agree to pay the asphalt people, mm -hmm. that we really stressed that something needed to be I have talked with him. put in the minutes that this wasn't going to go down the pipe again. And I did and I did find a copy, 7990, members heard me correct. Right. And what did we actually pay for that? I don't remember. 13 and some change. But I have talked with him in, in the future. He said he would notify me of any, and I told him I would poll the council. And so we've got that worked out. Any yeah, other discussion? All in favor, up lift your hand. Thank you. Motion carried. All right. Uh, Ms. Tara, do you have anything for us tonight? All right. Uh, do you have any questions about any of the financial reports? Anything? Go ahead. No. Oh, I thought you. <laughs> I thought you, you had something. I'm going out quiet. All right. Anything about uh, the bank balances? Huh? That's the current. Yeah. Y'all have a safe trip. Thanks, sir. Anything about any of the statements, uh, checks? Uh, 
right now with tax money coming in. You're flush with cash. It looks good. Feels good. It's <laughs> <laughs> one time a year we get to enjoy. <laughs> this, is the, this is the account that we pull the festival from, mm -hmm. from right? Mm -hmm. So all of the... Hidden, but none of the money's been paid out yet. You haven't moved it out yet, have you? There, no, there's not. I mean, there's no expenses to go with it yet. Okay. Some tomorrow. All right. <clears throat> uh, motion to accept the financial statements as presented. I'll make a motion. All right. Thank you. Second. Second. Tony, any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Motion's carried. We're now ready for new business. Um, we have the pay scale. It's at the back of your packet. We just need to adopt that pay scale. And uh, we have created the new two, two new positions and had to modify our pay scale. This is the pay scale. If you notice down at the bottom, it says 18 01. We've been using a 16-01, so this is going to be a new pay scale. Um, I'm going to say that I would like for us to come up with a committee to work on a pay scale. Uh, where we get this is from a survey that's done. Uh, across the states and we take a look at those comparable size cities and what they pay and so we kind of gauge our pay scale based on that but I would like for us to take a closer look. We have some positions that are no longer, you know, we no longer have. Uh, we've added some positions so I would like for us to have maybe a committee sometime whether you all want to do it or leave it up to the next council to make any difference but well what about what what are we, what are we doing with the uh klc right now i mean we're working on going? a handbook the right. handbook okay. but that can't they help us with a pay scale well because i don't know what survey this is and maybe maybe <coughs> in some town somewhere but i know that i don't know any water plant operators that start out at 1077 unless maybe they're not licensed am i wrong I don't think so. No, that's. I mean, I don't know where. I don't know that's what. That's why I say it needs to be reworked. Yeah, but what I'm asking is, is that something that KLC can also help us with? Because even if you put together a committee, who is that committee going to be, and how are they going to know what they're doing? Well, they would look at the survey that we get. Is it the state that does the survey, or who does the survey? It's voluntary, and you see that wants to participate. And okay. it's based by population. We participate. We contribute, you know. But this is what they got from that, right? It's it's taken from that. We've, uh, <clears throat> we kind of hit the middle of the rope because whenever we look at a survey, it always gives us, this is what the lowest pay in the state is for the, you know, we look at just cities of our size, and this is what the lowest is in the state, and this is what the highest is in the state. Uh, but then you're looking at cities that may have much less revenue coming in than we do or cities that have much more revenue coming in than we do. They can afford it. So we kind of try to hit the middle of the road. The only concern our, I have with taking with the state is it's a voluntary process of submitting dollars in. You're not going to get a good, good fair representation across the state. The second thing is we just made a change in our police officers to be competitive with the community, right. with the communities. We're trying to hire officers <laughs> who's applying in other communities. Right. We have to be competitive with our peers. Sure. You just heard the man make a statement a while ago that you cannot get water plant operators right. in the state. So, I mean, I'm inclined to agree with, with what Leon said. I mean... What are you going to get for ten dollars and seventy-seven cents an hour? Not. That's why we need to re, re come up with one something that's more reasonable. And yeah, my argument is not about the price on that. And what I'm saying is, um, if this is what we're getting from the state, what committee people could we possibly put on this that would know what the heck they're doing? Because this apparently is the professional <laughs> take on it, and it's not even. Close well, it's, to accurate. It, it's the closest thing that we can get to having some kind of input, you know, to help help us gauge. 
Okay, I'm all for putting together a committee. I don't know who in the world it would be that would have some knowledge that would make that better. But, but it needs to be reworked. Well, right now, I just need for you to adopt this as our pay scale. No. The two changes we got is a grant coordinator and a code enforcement officer. Yeah. And there's something that we're going to consider at our December meeting. We can't talk about it tonight because it's not on the agenda. But right, but also that that brings us in compliance. This, adopting this pay, pay, pay scale. This particular pay scale will bring us in. So these compliance. two adoptions right For here are based upon how many hours? I mean, based on 40 hours a week or mm -hmm. 20? Or, I mean, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. But what it does do is that the motion that you made of increasing the police, police officer, this will now be in compliance because we have to have that in place in order to make, even though you had the motion, we need that on a pay scale. I mean, and then the committee could later update it. Well, they could go in there and say, you know, this is not reasonable to say a water plant operator's tent. What would be reasonable? You know, what can we afford? What makes sense to us? <laughs> Not what makes sense to Columbia or Eubank or some other city, but. But the changes that Tony's motion was that was made that night. This the backs that up now. I'm just saying this is not. We have what I'm at for now is just a motion to adopt this as our pay scale for the city. That's all we need right now. I'm just saying the committee to come up with a new pay scale is something I'd like to see done. I guess a pay scale is more realistic than what we're putting here. Looking at right now. Okay. So you're saying this is still a work in progress, even though yeah. we... Yeah, this is what we go by. Right. We, yeah. We're maxed out over here. Right. This is, we, we can't, I can't pay anybody any more than what's over here. Okay. I mean, I think what I'm hearing you say with the corrections we've made, this thing is sick and needs some help. Yes, very much so. I need something so that if a person comes in to apply for a job and they are a class three water plant operator with five years experience, I can go to that pay scale and say, here's what we pay you. Okay, here's, and not leave it up to, or up to now it's been the mayor's. Discretion. Yeah, whatever he felt like, you know. And so I don't, I prefer that we had something that was more concrete that I could look at, point out to them, this is what you would make if you came here to work. Okay, I'll make a motion to adopt this pay scale for now. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All right, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Now, we've been informed that the way that we have done the stipends for the, this is something we have to talk about in the December meeting, but I'm just warning you now that we've been informed that the way that we do the stipends for the code enforcement officer, for the events, uh, coordinator and actually for Jason as our cemetery plot <laughs> person the way we do that is not legal so we'll have to fix that well I think we'll they're just going to turn into time card aren't they Pardon? they're wanting you to turn into time card versus a flat because they are hourly employees we can't pay them a stipend like that. They have to turn in hours and we have to pay them overtime pay and things like that. Okay. The Department so, of Labor will be almost like a duck on a So people bus, have right? a lot of time on their hands, is what you're saying. <laughs> okay, good. We can fix that. Yeah, that's that's for December's <laughs> meeting. Okay. Thank you. Now because uh, they don't meet the definition of an exempt employee, and you can't throw them in that category. Right. Under the new we, classification. We, yes. we can do. Uh, oh, okay. So these are not salaried employees. No, you we, got two we, categories: exempt and non-exempt, and you can't you can't just declare these employees as exempt and pay them a salary or stipend. I, I thought they were already with the new, exempt. With the new DOL. Right. Okay. Well, we can't. We can do. We can continue to do our fire chief that way. Uh, I'm going to get with Lisa about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, we may need to include him. I've got a couple of questions. I'm going to talk about with Lisa. Okay. About. We need to include that then. <laughs> all right. I have, uh, as all, all the business that we have tonight, uh, new business. David, do you want to discuss this and bring it up? I don't know. Lisa texted me. I don't know if I had anything I wanted to bring up. Um, and I wouldn't have said anything about it, but living in Hartford all my life in, in town for most of it, it never fails in the springtime and in the fall time when all the leaves fall. People love to burn leaves, and that drives me up 
And I, I'm, since I've been on the council, I've never had an agenda, but I've got this agenda on this one. <laughs> and it wouldn't have bothered me, but my wife has had pneumonia, and we were sitting in the hospital room, and I could smell leaf burning smoke coming into her room. Mm -hmm. Do we, I mean, educate me, don't we have a leaf pickup service? We, we have a leaf pickup service. I mean, and I know there's a law in which you can't burn, you can only burn after a certain time. Why do we have to burn freaking leaves in the, I like opening up my windows and, you know, the fresh air and whatever. Why do we have to burn leaves in the freaking city heart? We provide a service. Because people want to. <laughs> well, let me give you an example. In my no, situation, I would have to get them down to the edge of the road, and it's physically impossible for me to get my leaves down the end of the road. My driveway is almost 700 foot long. Well, I mean, I, I mulch and do everything I can, but I throw them in a ditch and I do burn. I'm but I mean, I understand, huh? Yeah, I'd shoot you probably. That's all right. <laughs> I shoot back. We'll have the Hatfields and McCoys going on. <laughs> That's all reason I brought it up. Just pet peeve, I guess. But... I mean, I think. I don't think. Huh? I don't break. So. Well, <laughs> we, we do have we do have a leaf pickup system. It's it's been very difficult because of all the rain that we've had. Uh, it's a tough uh, we can't pick them up when they're wet. They don't. Yeah, burners. They have to be dry. <laughs> But you can't burn them either when they're wet. So there's a lot of leaves still on the ground right now that people are just waiting for dry oh, I got, weather. I got leaves on the ground. They're on top of the tree limbs that are broke down in my yard too. So. Would you like to make a motion? <laughs> no, it won't pass. So <laughs> I feel the same way David does. Before I moved to Hartford, we lived out in the country, and on the country roads out there, we like to walk and the curves and the hills. And our dog and cats follow us, so we couldn't do that. So we would come to town every night, and we would walk three to four miles. Well, in the leaf burning period, it was just a haze all over the city of <coughs> smoke. And my sinus was just tearing me up for doing that. I mean, you think that the, the hours would be reversed, burn during the daytime. And in the evening time, don't burn, you know. But I, well, we got a bump. One we got. Like I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. just my pet peeve for the night. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe you brought to the attention that we do have a leaf pickup yeah. um, available if people will get them down next to the road. I'm not gonna, in the road, I'm, down next to the road. I'm gonna not in the ditch. Not in the ditch. I, I'm, gonna in the hound, ditch. I'm gonna hound one of the one of the new city. <laughs> Council person, that's why I'm going to get on to them. The point figures already, which one y'all to attack. Um, is there any, uh, we can't take up any other business if you're not going to make a motion. Informational, does anybody have any information that they'd like to dispense? I would to the new, new council people that you probably got something like this in the mail. There are two meetings that are very beneficial. There's a three-hour meeting that's free, and it's uh, it's December the uh, 11th in Madisonville or the 12th in Bowling Green. It's a three-hour free. It's just kind of an orientation. But January the 23rd to the 25th in Owensboro is a, an extensive training session for new council people and uh, it's just information overload and I encourage you uh, we will help you with the pay for that okay but uh, uh, it is close it's here in Owensboro and you will receive a lot more information about it in the coming days but let me encourage you because it really does help uh, help you understand more what's going on as a council person. So, just a little reminder there. Anybody else have any information? I would like to, if, before we leave the subject, I'd like to see if we can have a little discussion about the viola subject, just a little bit. See if anybody's got any questions and or input or input because, you know, when I ran, when we're sitting here, some of us were running numbers as we were running through it. And the first question I got, they want to want to enter to a ten-year contract. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, but it can be canceled at any time. But like with the, cause or without? Uh, I I think it's without, yeah. without cause. I think. Okay. We can just say we want out of it, but 
But remember, he said that they're investing what one hundred forty thousand over a ten year period, though. Yeah. But so, if we got at it third year, we'd be responsible for, for the, the balance remaining. of any. I understand that. Okay. So the other question I've got for you is, you know, they only quoted a first year fee. Right. Is that a bait and switch? Are they going to come in with a low ball price? I mean, I understand if they cut the water, if they cut the water down from a from the number of millions right. of gallons, if they cut it in half per month, that whatever savings that is, it's going to reduce chemicals, they're going to reduce all that, and they said there's going to be an adjustment. But my question is, is it a bait and switch somewhat on their pricing? And how close was their first year pricing with Hardensburg versus? Well, see, Hart with Hardensburg, they did they did a little more extensive work. They do everything except the police and fire up there. They do the maintenance and, you know, they do a lot more up there than what they mm -hmm. would do here. Uh, what what he said, I asked him about. I said I see only a first year price. What happens with two through ten? He said there would be uh, like a consumer price index. Not to so. In other words, the contract would be right to where the the increase in the rate would not exceed CPI or three yeah. percent or four percent or whatever is built into the contract. My my interpretation is every year is going to be just a sit down and negotiate type thing. I mean, they're going to they're going to have the CPI, okay, but if they come in here and they say, look, we saved this much money last year, so we're going to CPI on that amount, you know, I think it's going to be kind of a... Could a contract re be written to where the increase in the rate would not exceed, would be tied to CPI, tied not to exceed maybe 2% or 3% or something that could be written in there? And then the other concerns I've got, you talk about water, sewer, and electric. I mean, your utilities are not covered, obviously. In that. No. You know, we, city still has to pay the insurance on the properties, on, on the properties, right? No. That, like that's the liability or anything like that? Uh-huh. No, they pay the liability. Okay. Uh, what, what he mentioned was... For the employees. For the employees, but I'm talking about on the buildings itself. No, no, no. We're talking about buildings. Buildings. Okay. I asked him about the buildings specifically. And they're going to pay the liability? They're going to pay the, the, the coverage the on that? The insurance on... They won't pay the, we pay the utilities, we pay everything that is concerned with collection, uh -huh. like we, Sarah's uh, wages, uh, the cost of postage, uh, everything that goes on with collection. So have you ran a number, annualized? We've tried. What we, were, we, were, we had to get some answers to some questions tonight from him because there were some areas that we weren't sure whether, whether it was us or them that was going to be responsible for it. We've tried to come up pretty close with, with that, and uh, that's going to be the major question that I have is, can we afford what they are proposing? Uh, and it, Because, you see, we're responsible for all of the payments to regional wastewater. Mm -hmm. That's that's our baby, but anything that co is collected beyond what our payment is is money that could, we could use for the Olia's contract. <coughs> I, I just did some quick numbers based upon our water income and our sewer income, and what their fees were. Of course, there's some hidden factors there we don't know about utility bills. Labor dollars sitting out here for collecting it. We're responsible for doing the billing and the collection on that. Um, you know, I mean, there's a spread there. Yeah. Now, the question is, is how stout can that spread be held uh, based upon all these hidden factors that you're, yeah. we're talking about? I will tell you that I talked with uh, Mayor Macy up at Hardensburg that, of course, theirs covers a lot of areas where there's not revenue generation you know, like the maintenance, all right? And they have to take some out of their general fund every year, but, the, you know, like they would take it out anyway for, for maintenance, you know, for mowing and straight sweeping things, you know, whatever it is. They would have to do that anyway out of general fund. To me, that's the major concern is once we do some number crunching, you know, and look at like the last year or two, of uh, what we have available to pay that, is it going to be close or is it not going to be close? Well, I think the two concerns that, that are on the table. One is, what are these hidden fees? Because our water rates, our water rates are really not that bad, considering 
our sewer rates are horrible because of what we're having to charge to get our costs back off regional wastewater. Right. And then obviously the concern we've got about our about our employees. I mean the concerns that they have, and I think the big one of the biggest one is is the retirement on it. Uh, I think those I think those numbers are going to have to be ran pretty hard to take a look at it because they they're pretty good on telling us what their fees are going to be, but we need to go back. I mean you know it's easy to run numbers and see what our annualized income is on water and sewer. But there's more to it than that. Yeah, I agree. Well, there's also the factor that we're we struggle with meeting compliance. With right. The yes, water. that's that's given. That's given. <laughs> so that's a biggie, I would say. Now, uh, another question I'd have: I wonder how many people they've uh, contracted with, and within the first two or three years, those cities got out of that contract. They stayed. Uh, they stayed. There were. There were four names, I think, given to us. Um, two or three of them. One of them was, well, about three of them were in eastern Kentucky. And I tried calling about them, but I haven't had any ability to get, I haven't got hold of the right person to see. And it may not even have been Viola. It may have been another contract manager company that wasn't Veolia. Um, well, that was kind of the only question I had was the, the one example, and I only had like a sentence or two. The one place out there in eastern Kentucky, the city of Wortherlin. 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 And it, they said they only had a population of a thousand. And granted, it is showed on there that they were only doing the water, not the sewer. Yeah. But I'm wondering what the cost was. I mean, only a thousand people. I mean, is that a real rich? City or in Eastern how, Kentucky? Kind of how no. much? How much did they charge for that service for them? You know, I, I don't know. Um, see, I'm trying to think. Eubank was one of them that uh, was given to me that they had a, and I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'd have to go back and look at my notes. But there's uh, three or four companies, cities that have canceled. Uh, contracts with uh, I mean you saw which ones they had contracts with on their map well it also I concerns me too that we've already, we've already talked before even if we went down this road we're still going to be paying that hopefully would be in compliance anyway. and paying and it no, would I mean, be we're, we're still going to be paying for the the, the the, in the bonds or the loans or whatever. Yeah, we're well, still kind of dead in this on the plan. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, yeah. See, that's you the know. drawback of going to county water is if, you know, the wholesale rate we would get would probably not, I know it wouldn't be enough for us to make our bond payment that, that we have to make each year. No. And see, that's uh, those are the figures that we've got to throw in there. We yes, I, I ran the numbers. If you're looking straight off income versus what you're going to charge, I, that's a good spread. But there's hidden factors. What's our bond What's our bond indebtedness? What is our hidden factor on our labor dollars out there? Uh, and, and there's the issue with some of our staff that, you know, we're concerned about. Now, yeah, I'm granted, I, I think it's a positive thing about two employees that we have that's close to retirement is going to work with them. But I, what I do like, what I do here, like on the other side is, though, that they're going to keep us in compliance. I mean, there's nothing any more aggravating that every time we turn around, we seem like we have a compliance issue yeah. that we've got to address. Well, we already know we're going to be out of compliance for first quarter next year because our average of... You know, we already know that, but you know, I think we're we're trying to work and you know get in compliance. But I haven't got the report from our last uh, sample that we took, you know, a week or so ago. I haven't got that report in yet. But so you haven't run any preliminary numbers to see what the margin is between what what we think all our cost is. I, 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 we didn't get the email to a little while ago, and yes, I've already pulled down two prior years, and we put in our estimated cost that we thought the only was charging, but there were things like journal liability insurance that they are paying that I had in there that they were not paying. So until we know those, some of those detailed answers, you can't really be accurate anymore. Also, he was talking about the camera system going into the sewer lines, and I don't know if they built that into their cost, but didn't we just buy a system? We've got a, we've got a camera. It's a push camera. You know, we have to manually force it. Is that what there. we just bought? The system yeah. that we yeah. just bought. Yeah, we bought? use it. You know, and it's it's functions. Mm -hmm. Theirs is a more, robot that more goes on down a, more on the jetter system where it feeds where it automatically feeds through. Well, it's it's got uh, mm -hmm. track, <coughs> you know, so that it, it can go over place. 
I mean, is that something we need? I mean, we have access to it, but we've got access to a push camera right now that serves us for our purposes, you know. Um, they've got some equipment that we don't have, some bigger equipment that we don't have, you know. We, we have a jitter, but they've got a bigger one, you know, <laughs> for what it's worth. <laughs> On the proposal stuff, it's got occupation and financial. Is the financial stuff we're responsible for? I uh, haven't looked at that part of it. Where are you looking at? The attachments to the proposal. Shows that identify the needs, concerns, benefits to the city, and then it's got operational slash financial. In the back of the 200. And I'm wondering if, if they're responsible for the operational or we're responsible for the financial. I mean, I'm sorry, it's got the uh, electricity and stuff. It would take a while to run all these numbers to see where the difference well, is. I'm just kind of curious. Like, I'm, I'm looking at something here, yeah. uh, review and update all OSHA required written health and safety plans. Well, that's right. So that's something they The insurance. They're going to do. Okay. So bond and debt. What about the when it's financial? What's that? All that stuff. Uh, that's because you can't do this and have to raise rates right to a collection lane for the high. It's not under the city's control. Um, I mean, that's something they're going to do. That's not I, mean, I was just kind of curious why it would say one and then something else says the other one. Well, see, they're talking about putting a, a master meter to the pump station location. We've talked about doing that. Our, our pump station is right down here on Centertown Road, right as you're going out of town. Well, we've talked about putting in a meter there to measure what we're sending instead of waiting till it gets down to the plant mm -hmm. because if there's a break in the line down there, it's underwater so much that, you know, we would be, they would be sucking backwater in, but we'd be paying for it. We, we could say, well, we're not sending you that, you know, it's their responsibility to fix that line. Or we would know if there's a break that needs to be fixed. I don't know. There's a lot of questions that we're going to have to go through. You know. And, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's that's. I mean, that's another question I've got. If you bring up just a unique one. So let's say, for example, we know we have a lot of water breaks. Is this fees all included in that? On the water breaks, will we pay all the supplies? Yeah, that's their that's their that's seventy two thousand dollars a year. What? If, that's included in that seven hundred ninety six thousand, whatever it is up there, seven hundred ninety four. That's seventy two thousand. It's like their <coughs> expense account. They can use that for repairs and whatever, up to $2,500. If it's over $2,500, they've got to come to us and get an okay from us. That, yeah, we're willing to spend. Have they ever done, or they work with municipalities and expect assessments to be done for the residents that are fed by that certain area? Like, you know, we have all heard, like, You've got a certain section there, and if something's going to be done. They're going to send you an assessment for your pro rata share of that. I don't think I'm, I'm not sure. I've not talked to him about that. I mean, there's a lot of discussion that needs to be made on this, and I would welcome any of the new council members to come to the office and ask questions. And if if I don't know it from talking with him, we will. I'll be glad to call him, and we will get an answer. I'll, be, I'll give you his number, and you can call him. Tell him you're a new council member for Hartford, and you've got a question that you want to ask him. Uh, because they're going to be more than willing to talk. I'm not saying it's a council decision. It's not my decision. I'm just trying to facilitate and get as much information you know, as possible. And he said, I was that one came up with the idea, I wasn't. This council was the one that came up with the idea. Any more discussion? Entertain a motion, we adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for being here.